Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and I'm here tonight with my full review of the Topping D70S DAC and this is the MQA version. I believe this is the third version of this DAC. There was originally the D70, then the D70S, and then the D70S MQA, which this is. Uh, this was loaned to me for review by Apos Audio, and they currently sell this DAC for $649. Um, this is a digital to analog converter. That's primarily what it does. It does not have a built-in headphone amp. Uh, it is available in either black or silver. This unit has six digital inputs, which include USB, coaxial, optical, AES, IIS, and Bluetooth. It has two analog outputs, which would be um, RCA single-ended and XLR balanced outputs. Both out Puts um, have volume control, which means that this can be used as a preamp, and um, both outputs can be used at the same time. I've actually done that. I've used uh, the XLR and the RCA at the same time. This DAC uses two AKM AK4497 DAC chips. I believe that that's the flagship of the AKM line. And it accepts signals uh, PCM up to 32 bits and 768 kilohertz. DSD up to 512 and MQA and Bluetooth. And this unit has six selectable digital uh, roll-off filters, and you can toggle through those either from, uh, uh, can you do it from, no, I guess you can't do it from the front panel. You have to use a remote, and I will uh, show you that in a minute. Topping claims a signal-to-noise ratio of 124 decibels from the single-ended outputs and 127 decibels from the balanced outputs. They also claim a crosstalk, which means your channel separation, of at least 120 decibels from the single-ended outputs and 142 decibels from the XLR outputs. And that's the highest number I've ever heard for crosstalk figures. Um, the size of this unit is 10 inches wide, it is 7 inches deep and just under 2 inches tall, and it weighs in at about 4.2 pounds. This uh, comes with the uh, AC power cord, it has a uh, USB cable provided with it, it has a Bluetooth antenna, and it comes with a remote control. The screen, which um, Right now is black. It won't come on unless I plug it in, but um, I am going to show you a short clip of the screen and uh, running through the controls with the remote. So uh, that'll be in a couple minutes. And um, the did want to mention that the OLED screen can be uh, the brightness control, and that has three different settings. So anyway, I'm going to move in a little closer here, give you a close up of the DAC. And on the front here, you have your power button, you have your screen, and then you have your three switches here. You can, uh, like I said, this is a preamp, and you can adjust your volume up and down with these. And then the middle button, you can toggle through your uh, different inputs with that. Then on the rear, we'll start at this end. You have your power on-off switch, so you can either switch this off entirely from the back or you can set it, it's got a power button on the front, you can sit, leave the power switch on in the back which leaves it in a standby mode and um, or you can turn it off completely from back here but most people recommend that DAX you do leave them uh, in a standby mode and that way they don't take time to warm up and most people claim the DAX sound better if left on, but you don't have to leave it on completely, you just leave it in the standby mode. So, anyway, um, 
you have your AC power cable connection here. Then you move over to your six digital inputs, which would be your Bluetooth antenna, your optical over here, you have your IIS, which is um, just like an HD, HDMI plug, but it's not for HDMI. You can't plug like your, um, your Blu-ray player into this to that. Um, a, the IIS connection, um, there are t several companies using that now, but my understanding is there's not a st standard layout for that that some are wired different than others, but I was looking at the um, topping website or the description of this, and I believe there's a way you can go into the menu and actually alter the uh, connection to match up with different wiring patterns. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't have any other equipment that has that right now other than another deck, so, but there's, you don't hook two decks together, so that would be, uh, you know, a connection from your source, your digital source that you would run into that. Anyway, you also have your coax input, your USB input, and an AES balanced input here. Then your outputs, you've got your RCA single-ended outputs and your XLR balanced outputs on the back. I did uh, want to show you the remote comes with a nice little remote here, nothing fancy, it's made of plastic, but you got your power on and off, your mute, your volume up and down, you can uh, scroll through your different inputs, and then you also here, the FIR button, you can go through your different digital filters, and then your uh, auto button here, you can set so the uh, unit goes off by itself when it loses a signal and then comes back on when it does receive a signal. Like I have this hooked up to a, D or a CD player and um, it's a digital source and if I set it to auto on when I turn the CD player on the uh, unit comes on automatically and then like a minute after I shut the CD player off it shuts off automatically. Um, also here you have a brightness control you can toggle through three brightness settings on your display or you can set it to auto which I believe somehow senses the amount of light in the room and adjusts itself. So anyway, I'm going to switch over now to a little uh, short video of the display and uh, running through the different controls with the remote. And, um, and then after that, I'll be back with the second part of this video where I'm going to go into the sound. So I will be back in a minute. This is the Topping D70S MQA version deck. This is a standalone deck and uh, does have a remote control and I wanted to show you what functions the remote has. First of all, you can use this as a preamp so you have a volume control and uh, if you're just going to use it as a standalone deck, you just leave that probably at uh, full output but you can adjust it to um, you know suit your amp or whatever you have it hooked to okay it also has several inputs you got your IIS you've got AES you've got coaxial USB Bluetooth and optical as your choices for your inputs and then also from your remote you can control or switch between the six digital filters and um, you can run through all six of them here which is pretty handy to be able to change that from your seat and um, also it has a control on the display for your um, adjust your brightness you can set it to low medium high or auto which I think it uh, senses the light and adjusts itself because it seems to be on medium now and then um, you can also set your auto off or on which um, basically if you have it set to auto on 
if it picks up an incoming signal it turns the unit off or on automatically and then like a couple minutes after the signal goes off for example I'm using this with the CD player and if I have it set to auto on as soon as I turn on the CD player it picks up a signal and it switches on the DAC and then like a minute or two after I turn off the CD player it shuts itself off you can see it just did it there so um, anyway I'm not sure why that happened because the CD player is still on oh, um, I guess if um Oh, it's probably because I don't have it on optical. I know what happened here. Uh, the input is not on optical and the CD is hooked to optical, so it lost the input and it shut the unit off. So that's what happened here. So anyway, um, you can also mute from the remote or turn it on and off. So um, anyway, I'll get back to my video now. Hi and welcome back to part three of my full review of the Topping D70S MQA DAC. Uh, this part of this video is about the sound and before I actually get into the sound I did want to say that there's a lot of people out there and I base this on being the administrator of the headphone experience on Facebook. We have 13,800 members now and very often I see discussions about DACs and there's a lot of people out there that say that all DACs sound the same now. Well I partially agree with that but not entirely. The part I agree on is I believe that Delta Sigma type DACs, the DAC chip itself, have gone past the threshold of human hearing. So any improvements made on the DAC chips are probably not going to be heard. I mean, you take the average person can hear distortion at maybe 1%. So what difference does it matter if you have three or four zeros in front or after the decimal point, you know, um, before the number? What difference does it make if you have, you know, a one thousandth of one percent distortion or one ten thousand? Same thing with signal to noise ratio, okay? You know, I mean, what can humans hear? And I mean, once you get up above, you know, 120 uh, decibels of a signal to noise ratio, really even above 100, can anyone really hear the difference? Are you going to listen to the music loud enough? to hear a noise that's down even a hundred decibels from the rest of the music. You know, so anyway, I, so I agree with people that say in the fact that uh, Delta Sigma DAC chips are probably well beyond the threshold of her human hearing and it doesn't really make a difference, any improvements at this point. But my understanding is a digital to analog converter has four stages and these uh, processing stages and the input stage and the output stage and all that I believe can affect the sound and I definitely hear differences between different decks and that's going to be a big part of what I have to say tonight because I compared this deck to five other decks and I definitely heard a difference so that's what I wanted to discuss and um, but first I'll tell you what test equipment I used in reviewing this deck and first of all my clean power was provided by Core Power Technologies power conditioners. Uh, my source was a Cambridge Audio 540C CD player used as a transport only using a digital signal to all of these different decks. Uh, my amps that I use in this review are the Audio GD Master 9, the Burson Conductor 3 Reference, the Felix Audio Echo, which is an OTL Type 2 amp, and the Waveborne Edelweiss 3, which is also an OTL Type 2 amp. The headphones I used were the Hi-Fi Man Sundara and the Hi-Fi Man Aria, and that would be the new uh, third version, the stealth version. 
the Kennerton Odin and the Kennerton Thror and the LSA Diamond. Um, the DAX that I compared this to are the iFi IDSD Neo, the Benchmark DAC1, the Burson Conductor 3 Reference, which is a combination uh, headphone amp and DAC, but it can be used as a standalone DAC. And uh, the Audio GD R8, which is an R2R ladder DAC, the only one in this comparison. And the Topping E30 DAC, which um, is a much lower price DAC at $149, but was at the top of my recommendations list at the end of the year. Last year, I um, said that it's an outstanding deck for the money, and I still believe that. So I did throw that into the comparison, even though it's much lower price than the rest of the decks. But I was curious, you know, I wanted to know how does it stand up to a deck made by the same company, but much more expensive. And... Um, like I said, it's a, I really like the E30, and I had a feeling it would stack up pretty well, and it does. So, anyway, um, I'll get into the comparison. So, the first on my list would be the iFi IDSD Neo. And comparing the two, there's definitely differences. Um, I would say the iFi has a little bit lighter, less punchy sound. Um, it's a little, but it's a little more airy and open sounding. And the thing I really like about the iFi is that it has a very large sound stage, both in width and depth, and um, has a very three-dimensional sound. And uh, but. The uh, Topping D70 has a little bit more weight to it. It's a little bit warmer. Um, it's just a little more substance to the music, a little richer, and, um, and just a little bit punchier, a little more weight to the bass. So, and they're not very far apart. I mean, all these decks, I mean, there's not huge differences and yet I have to compare them directly back and forth to hear the difference. When I'm listening to them, I can't remember what the other one sounded like and, you know, for a very long time. I mean, any of these decks, my ears are gonna adjust to it and, you know, I'm not going to remember it sounding significantly different than another deck. But when I do switch them back and forth directly, um, and the way I did that is I used uh, my Audio GD Master 9 amp has five inputs, and I also used the Burson, which has a built-in DAC, but it also has two sets of analog input so I was able to hook other DACs up to that and then switch back and forth in the menu on the Burson and compare DACs uh, to you know the one built in and the same thing with the Audio GD Master 9 I was able to hook up two three DACs and switch back and forth so um, the I asked, the iFi yeah a li little bit more of an open airy sound but a little less weight a little less punch and substance of the sound. Comparing the D70s to the Burson conductor that would be the built-in DAC in the conductor three reference. Uh, the Burson of these five DACs has uh, probably the warmest, um, probably the bassiest, and probably the most punch to the sound. Um, and like I said, not huge differences, but it's just, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit richer, little, I wouldn't call it dark. It doesn't have any roll off in the top end, but it's just, um, like I said, a li little bit, punchier with a little more weight to the bass than the other five. What it does give up is a little bit of sound stage width and a little bit of depth. It's not the largest sound stage. Um, comparing to the Benchmark DAC 1, and that's been my primary DAC since I bought it back in uh, 2012. 
Uh, it's my first Sirius deck headphone amp, and that is a combination deck headphone amp, and originally sold for about $1,000, and there are upgrades of it now, the DAC 2 and the DAC 3, but the DAC 1 at the time uh, was rated Class A by Stereophile, and it was known as one of the cleanest sounding, best measuring decks you could buy, and uh, it served me well. Well, I compared the topping D70 directly to the benchmark, and um, they sound similar, but I would say the uh, benchmark has a slightly warmer sound, just a little bit warmer in the mids, and um, the um, I would say the D70 slightly beats out the benchmark in detail. There's just a little bit more detail there. And uh, the topping has just a little bit more width of the sound stage. Like I said, they're not that far apart. They're both great decks, but um, I would say, um, like I said, the, 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 the D70, that's uh, one of the things I really like about it. It's just, of the five, it's up there at the top if, as far as sound stage height and width and depth. Um, up there, I would say, you know, it's, it's definitely has a large sound stage. There's no doubt about that. Uh, comparing to the Topping E30, which, like I said earlier, that's only a $149 DAC, but I think it's outstanding for the price. Well, I compared the two, and they sound very similar in a lot of ways, but there are some differences. And what I came up with is the E30 gives up nothing in detail compared to the D70. I mean, the detail is up there with any of these decks. It, I mean, it has outstanding detail. What it does give up a little bit is the E30 just has a slightly thinner, a little bit more analytical sound to it, um, where the D70 is a little warmer, a little richer, um, I would say it, it, it has a better musicality to it than the E30. The E30 is, it can sound a little bit sterile, but um, like I said, it's not giving up any detail. They both have a very wide, very similar sound stage. So um, yeah, the, the D70 does sound a little better than the E30. Like I said, a little bit warmer, richer sound. But it's what four times, four and a half times the price. So um, you know the E30. I still highly recommend that. You're getting about 95% of the way to the D70 for, well, 90%. You know for a fourth the price. So still highly recommend it. But um, the the D70 is better. I mean, if I had to choose between the two, which one I wanted to listen to, I would pick the D70 without a doubt. Uh, the last stack that I'm comparing the D70 to is the Audio GD R8, which is an R2 R ladder deck. And um, it's the first one that I've reviewed, the first R2 R type deck. And number one, it's huge. It's heavy. It's about twice twice the width, twice the depth, and about one and a half times the height of the D70. And it also probably, I think it weighs in about 26 pounds. It's a huge unit. But anyway, um, the Audio GD R8 has sort of a unique sound. And this is the part that really surprised me. Okay, comparing the D70S to these five other decks. Okay, the D70S is obviously a Delta Sigma type deck. So is the iFi, so is the Burson, so is the Topping E30. The Audio GD R8 is a completely different type of deck. It's an R2 ladder deck. To be honest, the deck here that compares I think the closest to the D70 in sound is the Audio GD. 
which um, kind of there's another reason that really surprises me is I don't have the capability of measuring decks or amps or anything like that. I just go by how they sound. But I've seen measurements of these decks and the D70 topping is one of the best measuring decks on the planet. I mean, it's right up there in the very top. The Audio GD R8 apparently measures pretty bad. In fact, I think most R2R decks do measure significantly worse than the Delta Sigma type decks, but the Audio GD R8, I think, measures pretty bad from what I've heard. So the fact that it's a completely different design and does the digital to analog conversion in a completely different way, and it's the worst by far measuring of these five DACs, yet to me, it has the closest sound. So did Topping deliberately try to make the D70S sound like an R2R DAC? I don't know. R2R 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 decks are really popular right now and a lot of people prefer them. So maybe Topping deliberately tuned this to sound like an R2R, but of the five DACs, if I were to do a blind test, I think the DAC here that I would have the biggest problem and the hardest time telling the difference and identifying it from the D70 would be the Audio GD. They sound very similar. So um, the only real difference I can find, I can find very little difference in the tone. Um, they both have a slightly warm of neutral sound. They both have a um, rich, creamy kind of liquid sound. Neither one sounds analytical. The only real differences that I heard is I believe that the Audio GD, it just has slightly a little bit more of a, I guess a tube-like sound, just kind of a richness to it. And the Audio DGD um, also has a little bit more of a three-dimensional kind of holographic sound to it. And that takes nothing away from the D70 because the D70 is great in those respects. But to me, the Audio GD is just doing it a little bit better. Um, I do want to point out, though, that the Audio GD R2R um, R8 deck is about a $2,000 deck. So it's three over three times the price of the D70S. And it's huge, so you're going to have to have space for it. It's heavy, um, you know, but I have to say that I do, um, do prefer the Audio GD a little bit more, but like I said, three times the price. So what does it come down to? My overall view of this DAC is it has outstanding clarity, detail, resolution. It's up there with the best of all of these that I listen to. And these are all great DACs. You know, and price-wise, I mean, okay, the iFi, I think, sells for $7.99 now uh, compared to $6.50 for the D70, but it does come with a built-in headphone amp. Uh, the Burson Conductor 3 Reference, that's a combination DAC and amp, but it sells retail as $17.50 on that. The Benchmark is no longer available. It did originally sell for $1,000, but it does have a built-in amp. Um, the newer, the latest Benchmark 3, I think, goes for about $2,200. The Topping E30 sells for only $149, um, and then the Audio GD, if you buy it directly from Audio GD, I think it's about $17 something, but then you got to pay about $180 shipping to get it to the United States from China, where, um, or you can buy it from um, Underwood Hi-Fi. They are now an Audio GD dealer, and you can get it for about 2000 but they ship for free. So it works out pretty close the same. But anyway, so 
Um, three of these are in the same price range, pretty close as the D70, and uh, one's a lot cheaper, one's a lot more expensive. But overall, like I said, outstanding clarity, resolution detail, slightly on the warm side of neutral, um, has good weight to the music, good punch, um, good dynamics, uh, never sounds thin, never sounds analytical to me, just has kind of a rich liquid sound to it. Um, it has a wide and deep sound stage and uh, very pinpoint uh, imaging with very good separation between all the instruments and the voices and all that. And um, this does a very good job with uh, female vocals which are very hard to duplicate and make sound right and uh, piano music and acoustical piano uh, that's something else that's just hard to to get right and this uh, deck does a very good job so um, bottom line this is one of the best decks I've ever heard if I had to choose, I would probably choose the topping over the iFi. I would probably choose it over the deck that's built into the Burson. I would choose it over the Benchmark, which has been my primary deck for years. I would choose it over the topping E30, but I, um, I think I like the Audio GD R8 a little more, but it's three times the price. So... Um, yeah, it's a, it, this deck to me just has a great balance. Uh, it's just very well balanced. It does everything well. It's, um, uh, detailed, it's smooth, it's liquid, it never sounds analytical. It has a large sound stage with a lot of height and width and depth. The imaging is pinpoint, the separation is good, and yeah. I can, uh, for the price, six fifty. I think it's a very good deal. It's a great deck. It measures outstanding. And I don't think measurements are everything, but I do think they're important. You know, if something measures well, it's probably going to sound good. And, um, you know, unless you're looking for something that colors the sound a little bit or warms the sound a little bit, but that's not what this does. Topping equipment is very clean and very neutral and it is going to play back what's on the recording it doesn't try to color the sound or you know uh, paint it rose colored or anything like that you're just getting what's on the recording so yeah i um, really enjoyed my time with this deck and I can highly recommend it. And um, I was in touch with uh, Apos Audio, who does sell this and who loaned it to me. And I believe they're going to send me the D90 SE, I believe it is, next. And I'm hoping that I can get that in before I send this back and have a short overlap period so I can compare the two. That would be the D90 SE is the flagship deck from uh, Topping. I believe it sells for retails at $8.99. So I'm hoping I can compare those two before I send this back. So, um, but I'll, um, if I do that, then this, that'll be mentioned in my uh, first impressions of the D90. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up once again. This is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you are all welcome to join us at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. We're up to 13.8 thousand members. We just keep growing. So i um, like to see you all over there. And once again, thanks for watching my video.